So uh, welcome to our work session of Tuesday, June 6th. We are going to jump right in uh, with the topic of leaf blowers and uh, our sustainability advisory board is here, as well as our chief of police. Hi, everybody. We moved to open up the work session. We did already. Yes. Okay. SAV, you are on. Okay. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to share. Is that you on the Zoom? Is that your computer? Isn't there something on the bottom that says share screen? Start your camera first. Share screen? Oh, we're gone. Yeah, I know. Warren, they can share, right? Yeah, you should be able to. There's a green button on the bottom that has a share screen. Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, got it. Okay. All right. So we're here today to discuss the the leaf blower law. So the SAB wanted to discuss this with the town board um, because we wanted to see if there was a way of more fully enforcing the law, okay, because we don't believe that it has been enforced very well um, or at it. So we'll go through that, all the steps, etc. So, um, oops, sorry. So this is the agenda. We'll go through the leaf blower law, communication we've done to res residents, enforcement violations, and responsible parties, and recommendations. And then we have Michelle Sterling here, who is the, the chair of uh, Scarsdale's Conservation Advisory Committee, <coughs> and she may have her speak to, with uh, Scarsdale's experiences. Okay. All right. So this, I mean, we don't need to get into detail here, but this is what, where the there are the exceptions to the restrictions. Okay. So basically, there's a few of mostly home, mostly tennis courts, and you know, uh, recreational facilities, etc. And this is the third year that Newcastle is going to be in, in, having this law in place. Um, the SAP worked for four years prior to this, but you know, compiling it and revising it mm -hmm. before it was passed. Okay, so what, why do we have the law? Well, it's quality of improve, improvement of life, um, to reduce noise, protection of human health from the, produ the uh, production of pollution from leaf blowers, which is quite significant for the two-stroke models, and uh, reduction of greenhouse gases. Okay, so what have we done as far as outreach? Okay, so we have various icons here, but we've we've have lampposts on the banners in town. We have signs on the triangles, which I saw today or yesterday. They flipped it over to the better side. Um, that's mm -hmm. a triangle on one twenty, which is great. We, it's on the electronic sign, oops, and the electronic sign. The upper middle one is a brochure that we've produced. We've we've uh, distributed over thirty five thousand copies of this brochure. Okay, so. Um, and then we so we put it in the, in the water mailing, we put it in the uh, refuse mailing, we've had it at community uh, day, at farmers market, at any place, at the uh, recycling center, any place we can. Um, so then we also have, have a Nixle alert that goes out and um, Carrie puts on the top of the website this notice that you're not allowed to use the leaf blower. So that's in place also. Um, so we, there's this, uh, so I can't see that one on my screen. Go, uh, so, green okay, yeah, and then we we have done a podcast on Newcastle. I think two actually, on Newcastle Going Green it's about the leaf blower. Three more if we need to. Yeah, right. Okay. And post on social media all the time. Right. Um, so we've had two years of experience here. <laughs> this is the enforcement to date. These were these are from the police department. The the statistics. Um, my so, numbers are close. I'm sorry? My numbers are close. Okay. <laughs> yes. so, well, that's okay. That's good. So the first year we had 42 complaints and there were zero citations. And last year we had 31 complaints and we had zero citations. Um, so the way the enforcement is done here in Newcastle right now is that whoever it is resident calls to make a complaint to the police department. The police department dispatches the unit. Obviously, it's not a priority call. Okay, so the unit does come go to the address, and if the person is still there, they will either they will talk to the person and they'll either issue a warning or a citation if it's a second offense or more. 
Um, so normally, though, or a lot of times, I've, I've done these many times myself, but it's the time the police officer gets there, and it's through no fault of the police department or theirs, the, 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 the operator of the leaf blower is gone at that point. So they can't really be held responsible at all. Um, but so some municipalities, such as Scarsdale, um, have a dual enforcement where they enforce it using the code enforcement officer of the building department during business hours. And then off hours, they do use the police department for enforcement. Okay. okay, so right now in Newcastle, the person who receives then the citation or the, the uh, warning is the operator of the equipment. Okay, so it's not. So the, the question is who should receive it? So the landscaping company at this point is not considered to be responsible. This is not in code, this is the way it is enforced in practice. Um, and should the homeowner be, be responsible for it? So right now, Chief Carroll corrected only the operator of the So that was device. my, yeah, that was my initial take on this. Um, but I have had talk with counsel recently, um, um, uh, Stu, uh, prosecutor, and then who, we, we have determined that certainly the landscape or landscape company could be issued to summons on the definition of personal, which I believe is your next slot here. So, right. <laughs> uh, and I know there has been some discussion about the board about the homeowner. So. Quick question. Does, is there any communication that goes to the homeowner when it's been operated on their property? Because what I'm thinking is I'm not usually there when my landscaper comes. I have told him what to do and I've provided him with an electric one. But that I don't honestly know if he's being called on because I'm not there. Mm -hmm. um, is there so I, yeah, I, any notice for the homeowners? You know, I guess it's it's all each case is in, you know mm -hmm. is, is unique. So I, you know, I had 29 cases for last year, but I only ran from June 1st till September 30th during the violation time. So we're very bored outside of that. Of those, we were there was 10 warning issues. 14 were. Um, there was no violation observed and then there was five it turned out in some instances it was you know weed whacker chainsaw not actually that so so that was my point but each one sure if the homeowners there we're going to talk to them um you know the landscaper sometimes we talk to them and we also call the company to, to get uh, their information to inform them of that my guys did we're passing out pamphlets and um you know we did not have a repeat offender because that was my plan all the time education second Tommy came in contact with him, so it's not right. When you say repeat offender, repeat offender in terms of the lower specifically or the company? A person and now company. Because I, I, you know, company could operate in multiple places in town and over multiple years, so yeah. they've been informed once, one year, one location, no matter where they are the second time around. If we're going to enforce for the company, now well, the name of the company would go into our blog report, so. So I think the board has to discuss and it doesn't necessarily need to be today but we need to discuss whether it, the homeowner themselves should be <coughs> yeah, no, as the employer of the landscaping company i was just asking if right now there was any process to notify a homeowner who was not home that they're whoever they yeah, hired is if they hire excuse me if they hire somebody you're making a contract with this landscaper they need to be told you can't do this it's a law so right from the get-go of you getting this person, you know, paying them and using them, they need to know this. So the the the, the house, the homeowners have to like keep up their way, you know. What I'm saying, saying well, but you're also making an assumption that the homeowner is telling them. A homeowner can also say, just to play right. devil's advocate, yeah. I, I don't, I know what the law is, but I really don't like grass cuttings, and hopefully no one will catch you. You know, it can. You don't know what's being told. So I, I don't think my officer was going to notify the homeowner if they weren't there. I don't okay. think they were going to take the time to follow up. Okay, that's, like, that's what I wanted to know because about, if the homeowner doesn't know one, that they're not following the instructions. One, of the, one of the suggestions we've had is maybe we should have a door hanger so that when they show up, mm -hmm. the officer or whomever could put a door hanger mm -hmm. that says there was a violation on the front of them. Yeah. You know, I can also have when we have event cards or there's a stick in the door, it's our says 
the blotter number, please contact the Newcastle Police. So if somebody comes home, and you see that, they call us. Well, I do want to fix it. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. Watch out. I don't want to go to the house. Like, for a while. Yeah, all um, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. So it's yeah. been brought to our attention that Bedford has these, um, you know, flip cards, one side in English, one side in Spanish. Um, they actually, this got picked up at the buildings department in Bedford. Um, mm -hmm. So new people coming through and stuff like that. But, you know, I had just raised with you the possibility that maybe we want to take and create these and keep them around town hall. There is no, it's, I, I, I've never seen a notice other than the mailings in town hall for anyone to yeah. come in and keep one out. You mm -hmm. could probably turn that into a door, door hanger. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, a, we have door a door hanger that we've designed that we could distribute, but we could also have something like that once we've made a decision when Kent finishes up here. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to derail. I just wanted yeah. to know if, it, if the homeowner was there informed that there was right yeah, a but, complaint but at we, their we location. are advocating for door hangers. Yeah. Well, but right now, the law is completely unclear as to who it actually is who's responsible. It says any person who violates any provision of this chapter. So it, is it the person operating or is it the, is it the homeowner? Well, I can tell you in Scarsdale, just to let you know, because yeah. we did like a whole legal analysis of this. Mm -hmm. If somebody, if you contract with someone, you have a contract with them and they violate the law on your property, they break the law, you have contracted them, you have hired them, whether it's somebody doing roof work who's breaking the law or window work or any one you contract with the homeowner is responsible that we did a big legal analysis of this question i'm just saying with our town attorney very in-depth and that was how we came out and therefore if a landscaper is breaking the law on your property and it's your law you get a summons as well as the landscaper and that has been what we have done and it has been very successful. And well, you know what, I, I, think that, I think that if you put that in the law, if you put in the law that the homeowner is responsible, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But to take your, your position to its logical conclusion, you could have any worker on your property come onto your property and do something illegal. If you contract with them. If but, you con but, but you're not contracting with them to do something illegal. Yeah. Correct. Right? So they can take the job that they have and decide that they're going to do something illegal in connection to that. Correct. And in those cases, I don't think the homeowner is responsible for someone. They are. So if somebody does asbestos removal, like you're hiring them to yeah. remove tile, and they see that there's asbestos, they have to immediately stop because asbestos removal is a totally different protocol. They have to stop and do a special removal. If they just go ahead and lift up that tile and just bag it in baggies and tie it off and dump it, they've done something illegal. This and and that's on you as a building code you contract. It's a violation, and it's on the homeowner. The homeowner is responsible? Correct. Uh -huh. the, homeowner, the homeowner is responsible. So, so, so we're yeah. looking at our council right here. So it has to be a criminal act that's reasonably connected to what they've been contracted to do. It's not that someone breaking goes the law. on and breaks the law, and them. all of a sudden you're, you're responsible because someone unforeseeably has broken the law on your property, which you did not contract for. Correct. You know, so I, I'm not sure about that's the, the way legal when you contract with someone yeah. generally you're assuming part of that is that they are going to abide by all the correct laws. So but Ed, would you in I'm this saying. context with the leaf blower legislation, the uh, the definition of person and uh, maybe even you have to take a fresh look at the, the law from top to bottom, but you certainly could amend it and make right. it provide that the homeowner could be liable for violations. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The board is going to have to. The board is going to have to discuss whether or we want to allow this, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it could be not a residential home, right? Because we could be talking about other the property owner, yeah, the mm -hmm. property owner, not what just a residential. What if it's a rental? Right. Yeah. Right. It's a rent right. It can be. I've what, seen what? examples in other places where it's everybody. It's the owner occupant, uh, and it's you know. Definition is extremely broad. Right. If we were amending the statute, we have to workshop it and we have to public hearing. Yep. Yep. Yes. So, so here is what is in our code, and as far as person, it does not have property owner. Okay, so that would, would right. be something that would have to be added to that. And perhaps mm -hmm. Scorsios does, but ours doesn't. Right, they do mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. state it. And yep. there is, therein lies the difference between Scorsios and Correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay
So that's the, so. So what we're recommending is that both the homeowners and the landscapers and the garden, you know, gardening companies are subject to the citations. So which would require a revision of the law. However, I'm going to say that we would advocate for a two-step process because there are ways of enforcing the law without the property owner portion. So we can go and do the actual operator, and we don't really want the operator, but we could do the the landscaping company and change the enforcement to be more, you know, to be stronger. Um, so that's what we would be advocating for. Okay, so two-step process. So otherwise, it's well, going to get, like get bogged down like the in law. hearings and all that kind of so thing. So right. let me ask you a question. Regardless of who is the one actually receiving the citation, I think your issue was that no citations were have actually been issued. Yeah. So, well, the there's issue is still going to be zero, no the matter what definition. The lowers is. all the time, everywhere. It's it's not you know. Yeah, so, and so some kind of enforcement has to be done, you know, to, to make sure that landscapers don't do this, you know, because they talk among each other. They know they know whether there's being, there's adequate enforcement or not, and whether they're going to get caught and fined. And so if there is no mechanism to do that, they're just going to continue to operate. And, and can you remind me what, what's the mechanism to enforce a town violation? If it was a parking violation, you couldn't get a new permit, for example. So, on a town violation, which you can't issue, you have to There's a fine. It's not, I don't think it's up on the board. No, 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 no. I get that, but how do you, if I don't pay, I'm an outside vendor coming to town. I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to look. I don't think there's a provision like we have in some of our other code sections that says it can be a lien or right. a right. so tax bill. Right, yeah. right, exactly. You can't, or you can't get a new parking permit. I don't think have ever had occasion to have that conversation. Next. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so again, we're advocating for the door hangers also in addition to. to that seems so. like a straightforward thing that can be done without any yeah. changes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So, mm -hmm. And then again, Michelle, do you have any, anything else to add to the discussion? Well, I mean, do you want to just, should I just go through like what, what we did in our town? Yeah. 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 Yes. That's that's change change so, we actually, our leaf blower law was put in place in the 70s. Um, it was mostly because of quality of life and noise. And ours original law was exactly what you have, June 1 to October 1. And um, it really wasn't well enforced. There were plenty of leaf blowers going on for years and years and years. And then a few years ago, our conservation advisory council were appointed by the village board. Um, we said we need to expand it. And just to let you know, right by us, so in Irvington um, and Larchmont, they have complete leaf blower vans. So they're year long electric. And then there's some that are on the other spectrum, you know, very limited. And so we felt we could expand our leaf blower van. So we have now expanded it in 2021 to January 1 to October 1. And what that did was that that made it so that the landscapers now need to use electric during the spring leaf cleanup season. So we still allowed October 1 on, which is the fall leaf cleanup, which is considered like the heaviest. But spring was generally a time when there's a lot of leaf blowers used. So what did that do by expanding it? That basically said to everybody, you're really going to need to switch to electric now. Because if you, if you need to use electric during the spring, you're kind of switching over. And so that first year in 2021, we pretty much just issued warnings. Um, it passed in March of 2021. We issued warnings. We have door tags, which I was going to offer you guys if you want. You know, we could, you could change the name on them. Um, we also did put things in people's boxes. So, for example, like a homeowner isn't there, somebody breaks the law. Um, the you know the the enforcement officer comes, stops them, um, and they put a little card, an English Spanish card, in. The mailbox. Who is your enforcement officer? So Monday to Friday from nine to five, we have always had a building department, you know, inspector or enforcement person. So for any building department thing that gets like analyzed, right? Like when they come to issue your CO, um, you have building department staff. So we are utilizing our building department enforcement people that we already had in place for Monday to Friday, nine to five. But after 5 p.m., or on the weekends, we utilize, um, utilize meaning residents would then call the police. Mm -hmm. um, but I should say that, you know, it's very difficult for any enforcement officer to then 
race out of there, you know, race out. I mean, the guys are basically done already or they'll shut it off. So what we do allow is if you, if a resident takes a video or takes a picture of the truck, um, they can actually email it in to the building department um, and the building department will do enforcement follow-up, meaning they'll call and say, you were spotted at this address, please don't do it. And usually the first couple times when they call, it's just a call. You're spotted, please don't do it. And they don't argue. You know, they're not, there's not people saying, I wasn't there. They're like, okay. And the second time, this is the second time. And, you know, they keep tallies. Mm -hmm. And then the third time, <clears throat> it's $250 summons, you're going to get a summons. So eventually they do start getting summonses. And I have to say that this scenario, the combination of the building department with the emails and the calls and the police department either stopping or you know calling it into building department, it works. And is the homeowner called at the same time? The homeowners are also notified, correct. If mm -hmm. it's on your property, because you know, when the when the email goes with the you know the photo of the truck, which usually they have like the name and the number on the side, mm -hmm. it's also at such and such address. So they also get notified. But it's it's not really we're not doing it you know to make the two hundred fifty bucks we're doing it to get people to stop doing it. Generally, after a couple's calls, a homeowner will speak to their landscaper and say, "Look, I don't want to get a fine. I don't want you get a fine. Let's do this already." And I have to say, it works. We we don't have I mean we really don't have leaf blowers anymore. In our so one, pro, one of the big differences to, to shift this here for a second is we are a municipality of like approximately twenty four square miles where you are a municipality of 107 square miles. Correct. You are a small village. We are, it could take a half hour, 20 minutes for one of our guys. Exactly. That's why I'm saying to not do that. That's why I'm saying to not do that. We, we so, don't do it either, even on in our 6.6 .6 square miles. We don't do that. We so don't send I, people to sites anymore. We're all doing it by photos think, and emails. I think that, I think to your point, I think that's a so much smarter, more Correct. efficient way. It's yeah. way more efficient. The, the, in the very beginning, we did try with the call and the sending out. Honestly, it was frustrating for police and building department. They would get there, the guys would shut it off. You know, it's, there's, it was pointless. If you just do it with the photos and the follow-up calls, it's totally effective. And also, then you have a record of it, right? So then, oh, this is who I called. We're checking them off. Oh, I called them last week too. You're a repeat offender when I call you this time. It just works. And, and, and it becomes less and less, right? It's like in the beginning with the seatbelts, you know, the guys were pulling people over right and left about the seatbelts 30 years ago, right? No one gets pulled over for seatbelts anymore because everyone just wears their seatbelt. All of our landscapers now just have electric. So in the beginning, there were a lot of calls in, by building department, you know, and, and somewhat police too, but police was mostly referring to building to do the follow-up. But now it's not that much. It's, do you know how many citations are being issued or how many calls you're getting a year? We're, now. Well, well, it's been, it's, you know, it's been two years. So in the beginning it was a lot. I mean, I won't, you know, but we weren't really issuing summonses in the beginning. So in the first, the first six months, six to eight months, it was warnings. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really not trying to no, 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 absolutely. Yeah. make and, money off right. it. It was warnings and a lot of cards and cards and door hangers. And did you do anything for landscapers that maybe can't afford electric leaf blowers? So this is the thing. The Greenworks leaf blowers, which are 600, seven, over 600 CFM, it's a strong leaf blower. They're under $400 and they are available everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, in the beginning, they're like, oh, it's too expensive. They're not available. There was some availability issues back in like 2020. Now they're available and they're inexpensive. So there's really not that anymore, to be honest. And you know, the guys who are using the gas blowers that are 1,000 CFM, you know, we all know now that 600 CFM is perfectly fine to do every single property. And we have a 50% canopy in Scarsdale, so we have a lot of mature trees. I mean, you go on Google Earth, you can't even see our town, most of it. So we have a major leaf, leaf drop. Um, and those Greenworks work great. All the guys are using the Greenworks back. I, I would say 75% of our guys are using the Greenworks backpacks. So one of the things that happens the way the enforcement is now is you're hitting the residents that want leaf blowers to stop against the landscapers. I know myself, I've had incidents where I thought I was going to get punched by one guy. 
Maxine has had people swear at her when they when she's trying to get them to stop. It's it really there has to be some kind of other enforcement mechanism. It doesn't involve the residents. So you don't want us to encourage what Scars to do. No, 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 Residents interact between the residents and the landscape. We, we never, no, the video was perfect. Did the residents, I mean, like, yeah. residents can take contact. a picture of yep. the building? No, no, I, I don't no. remember there ever being a thing where we advocated that, you know, people should go up to neighbors and, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 we don't do that. It doesn't we work well. We told people to call, it doesn't work well. Right, but if it's not working with the next alternative. You, you, you say that, but with all respect, we have 6,000 parcels in town. And when we started this in 2021, we had 39 violations notified, 30, 39 calls came into the police. In 2022, a year later, after a year of education, we're down to 29. And that's, again, 10 warnings were issued, 14 on I, but I think that's, that's a false number. I think yeah. that's a false number because I think most people wouldn't call it. I've seen it. I'm right. not calling it. So, that, I, that, so I think it's well, that We can't do anything yeah. about that, whether somebody's calling it in or snapping a picture and emailing in, which arguably takes more time. But I think if you snap unless it picture, happens, yeah. you you're not gonna get it. Doesn't I think we're talking about the number of complaints, whether it was an email complaint, which could be possible which Scarsdale's doing, or a phone complaint, if we're only getting 29. But I think it's because people aren't complaining. Yeah. I think because people are afraid they think, to complain. They, they don't want to respond. It's not effective. I'll complain. But how is that going to change? change. Okay. I'm still live, ratting on something. I, I, live on, uh, I live off of Ludlow. I have Gary Drive, Button Hook, Ludlow, my neighbors. No, I understand At one given morning, I can hear five people still using leaf blowers starting at seven in the morning no, I so i'm going to get up saying, and call the police and go people well are, always you know people are more impossible. likely to take a picture and yeah. send an email I, 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 just I, from experience I agree. Yeah. people don't like to call the police no, and, and give you know their neighbor or whoever's right. address mm -hmm. i can just so tell you people are true. much more likely to just take a picture mm -hmm. and email the picture into the building department and sometimes people take the picture and email the picture in without stating the address and that's okay too because they don't want to say the address. Of, and sometimes they say the address. I also think this is now going into year three of the law. There there has to be a little bit of a grace period, too, for people to get used to the uh, education, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it makes sense to me that we would see a higher number in year one, decrease in year two. Right. Hopefully, it's much lower this year. And we're going to implement something a little bit differently to hopefully bring it to, you know, as, as close to zero as possible. I don't know that we'll ever get to zero. But outreach, education, and maybe making it a little bit more user friendly to notify someone when it is happening, sending a picture, sending a video, rather than having to put in a call to the police. Because I personally don't know that that's something that I would do, right? I don't know that, that I want to call the police and take away their resources over a leaf blower, but I would definitely be much more inclined to say, hey, building department, the landscaper mm -hmm. using something at such and such address. I think that's a little bit. I think we should realistic. require an address because yes. I think that sending in a picture, yes, it might have the name of the landscaping company, which is important. But I think the la the homeowner or landowner yes. also mm -hmm. must be notified. Yes, we need an address, mm -hmm. and we need. I would love, and as a homeowner, I a notification, I, right? I would love I'm, to know that. Yeah, I want to know if my landscape yeah. is following sure. the instructions that I'm Well, I have a question sure. for uh, Scarsdale about that. Your law doesn't require um, an address with the uh, reporting? We don't. Because you're saying sometimes they don't put the address. Yeah, I mean, we don't have in our law how it gets reported. That's and not yet, And yet, it's so been effective. effective. So my, my only hesitation. Part of, about, a friendly phone part of why it's effective, just yeah. to say, is sorry, is because also, and I, maybe this is beyond your scope, but it's January 1 to October 1. It's actually much easier to enforce a law that's, because now, because it's January to October 1, all the guys have bought electric blowers. When you only have it for this little teeny thing, the guys use the gas in the spring, so they're, so they're still buying the, the gas equipment. Mm -hmm. If you expand it, they're going to buy electric because they need, they'll need it. Do you think that ultimately that's why it's successful? 
and, I think, and it's not I think, all of the other measures. You know, I think it's a combination. Edges, think I think that? it's a combination, but I definitely think having January one to October one is so effective because that then it's worth committing to buying the electric. Right. Yeah. That so maybe I, we would expand the long so. so let me ask you a question. Do you ever get, and I don't know if you would know this, do you ever get neighbors who are just pissed off at their other neighbor and just fabricate pictures? No, we have never gotten that. No, okay. but I think a bigger issue would be jurisdictional. I don't know how you enforce this. A criminal defense attorney would go to trial every single time and you send me a picture. Say this is what I did. You got to give me that address, that time, that location. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We just we have not business. had any. In fact, this this gas blower van, like it's one of those laws. It's probably the most popular law Scarsdale has ever passed because everybody is working from home, and everybody appreciates it. You know, you never the highway and the government. You know, they never get these emails like "thank you so much," right? They get like these complaining emails. We actually, our town board actually gets. Thank you emails because the quality of life, we used to have incessant blowers mm -hmm. literally day and night, six days a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a poor quality of life in a very nice town. Now it, we have silence in our town. People are in their yards. You can live yeah, can outside. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't think so. You don't, no one in our town thought so either. I, I can just tell you, I, I worked on it for But the electric blowers make Noise. Right. Very, very yeah. little. Nothing compared. If to you look at the it doesn't, it doesn't carry as far an electric blower. So, so, so you don't hear it as far. Yeah. Jeff Je and Kent, for sake moving this forward, you support the idea of the, the door hangers, the concept of changing the law to make it clear that it's for the landscaper as opposed to just the person. And the homeowner. And the homeowner. And the homeowner. The homeowner, the homeowner, the homeowner, the homeowner and, will and, require. And then, and then, and then enforcement, and then enforcement through. Do pictures. Can we do it through the building department instead of instead of or in addition to the police department in addition to the police? Yeah. What do and the SAB is willing to participate in whatever way. We got it. We have to see how busy our building department is. We're we're not a large department, so we can we can talk about that. Well, let's. I think we just gotta enforce it. But I think this is more just the mechanism, like. The emails with the pictures, you know, we can create a leaf blower at mynewcastle.org and people can email it there and we just have to figure out who that goes to. <laughs> um, and then are you also advocating to uh, expand the law to encompass January 1st to October 1st? We were not, we were not advocating for that at this time. Okay. What we'd like is the homeowner to be included, but that will require a change to the law, so mm -hmm. that takes a little time to get mm -hmm. through. But we'd like that to be. But the expansion of the time period would also require well, hearing. Yeah. So let's, let's, yeah, that would all require uh, hearing. Can that be done? I don't know that we're ready. It has to, to be done separately for each thing. I'm not. It all be done. No, no it can no, all no. be yeah. done at once. I mean, the, the homeowner, the landscaper, and I'm not sure that it can all be done at once. Right. right. So if you're amending yeah. the law, you need a public hearing, whether you're amending one provision or ten. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, that was the way you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know that we're ready to have the time to change. So, but so like I was mentioning before, we're looking for some near-term relief. Yeah, you know, as opposed to having to go through the whole hearing process. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. No. Well, no, one could be no. done. The, the we, hearing process right. could be done while we implement something else. Well, well we could be the door door hangers yeah. without changing the law, and we could tell we could tell people that they can yeah. send a. Photo and a friendly phone call can be made. It doesn't have to be right. They could send a photo to an email address. Assuming we somebody's not going to pass to make the phone calls, right? Which is exactly. who's that? Who's that? that, that, is. Yeah. Well, we but that person could make a phone call. Who's going to make that just call to the landscaping company? Well, right. We need to talk about that. There's less of an urgency. We need to talk to. Uh, Tom and see what his bandwidth is right. and everything. The email works just as well, if not better. Yeah. So it doesn't take someone off the job to come running out. So right. The email is just better all around. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. As long as you have, and it's better time. for the police Any department. Right. Yeah, on weekends and nights, that's fine. Well, I spoke to two landscapers well, no, in the last couple of days who were using it, and they told me um, they know about the law. Not only did they know about the law, they know that other towns nearby 
are now implementing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're going to have Bedford and Austin and the towns that are close to us doing the same thing, mm -hmm. numbers, they can't avoid it at that point because it's going to be overwhelming to them. Right. And then eventually, hopefully the state, I don't know what your representatives, uh, but there's uh, something on a bill uh, around. In, in the, bill is, the bill that's around is just that. June to October, so yeah. 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 It's just doing okay. okay. But in any event, right. it's just a positive um, point I was making. So. Okay. So SCV, can you send us proposed language? I see something there for your door hanger. Right. It should be bilingual. It is. Yeah, it is. There's another side. Well, yeah. but this is meant for the homeowner. That's for the homeowner. So the homeowner may from... also want to give it. You know, they read it and then they give it to your landscape. Yeah, I like the QR there. code so that you can yeah. get the yeah. the image because by what I just have been yeah. doing is texting my landscaper at the little yeah. the flyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. since it's got all the languages on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you send that? It's not in what we have. So no, can not. you send that to us and then Jill, can you also send us a copy of Bedford's the yellow one? And then if you have yours and you want to send that to us too, you're your door hanger language, sure. that would be great. So we can look at it and pull together one. Yeah. And our, I mean, we have a bigger flyer which does cover a lot of things on yeah. the smaller but yeah. But we can certainly size it. Okay. The more we can go electronic, the better too, right? Okay. Well, the, the air and land and water and it's everyone would benefit. Every municipality should have this problem. Mm, sure. <laughs> well, look at the air today with these fires. <laughs> Well, so thank just, you, thank you for coming. Yeah. So, 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 when you when you right. call down, you have your yeah. windows yeah. down so you can <laughs> listen to mm. the silence. So there's not gonna be any sound of silence. Really, it really is quite straightening yeah. from what yeah. we used to have. Yeah. 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 And nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The choir is good. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna we're gonna pick this up, talk about it, figure out, but I I'd like to say. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But don't leave yet while we have you here. We need, can we can we get back to this conversation? Because while we have you here, we also want to talk right. about SAB social media. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So okay. under right. yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Technically, every committee is supposed to get approval from the town board before they have a Facebook page or any social media. And then, you know, general postings are not a problem of events, of things like that. Thank you. Bye, Bye Chief. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. You think? But to the extent there's like uh, messaging that might be like a position statement on something, that's actually supposed to be approved by the board mm -hmm. um, before that goes out, just to make sure because. Ultimately, we're all one town, and ultimately, it kind of the SAB is a committee of the board, and so ultimately, any messaging has to have the, the approval of the board. Not like leaf blower laws in effect that can be posted; it's not a messaging statement. Um, but they are other messaging statements are supposed to get approved. Um, I have no problem giving approval to the SAB to have a Facebook page. Um, I'm assuming nobody else has any. No, it's Instagram. Yeah, we already have Facebook. Okay. So most so of what's going to appear, appear on the Instagram, that would be great to gather. So most of what's going to appear there is what we post on Facebook. Anyway. Which is really just okay. educational. I mean, we're not taking positions on our own, you know, okay. without, without talking with the town board. All right, and is there anything in the podcast that's kind of positional? I think it's all education no. that I've ever heard. No. It's mostly education. It's we really try just education. We stay away from okay. yeah. We stay away from anything positional or politics as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we're trying to get people to do, uh, you know, solar, uh, and, and get them to understand that you have to be proactive and, and just give education on you know what you can do, tips you can do. I mean, I, I don't think I try to avoid it. Yeah. Right. And if there was ever one thing, I think we had Aaron edit something out once. One time, it was something because he mentioned something about his neighbor, but we had him edit it out. Mm -hmm. But no, it's I, really just it's yeah. it's geared towards being. I mean, the last one was solar before there was Earth Day. Right. You know, it's been 
Right. The water treatment plan. Next one's going to be the really the next um, center. Yeah. Yeah. So do we have issue, or you're asking if you can have an Instagram page? Is that Correct. Correct. Okay. So is there some sort of policy that we need to create? We have a solution for the story on and it needs to be again. Yeah, okay, so I, I don't have an issue. Okay. I, don't have I feel like when you post, there's a button now that when you post on Facebook, it automatically goes to Instagram too, or vice versa. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. So, you know, maybe the resolutions should say it's okay. Committees have a social media presentation. Yeah. Other than saying, Facebook should be because every time yeah. we'll be doing this, yeah, we don't need to yeah. call on Facebook. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because sure. otherwise you can knock down, down, down doors or break windows and things like that in order to Correct. get inside. Or, or you have 30 volunteers waiting for an hour and a half for the mm -hmm. custodian or the the uh, superintendent or someone to come because you really mm -hmm. don't want to break anything. Now, that's that's a matter of convenience and it speaks to that point. However, in the event of, of an emergency, some of these places are quite well locked up and if there was something where someone was inside reported inside of medical emergency it also facilitates our ability to get in there quickly and efficiently mm -hmm. so on that perspective so there, there it's well known the the corner on the market is by knox k-n-o-x um and they if you go onto the website they can statistically show you that the um uh, amount of times that someone used this system to illegally enter a structure is, is, is very minuscule. In addition, there are electronic devices on the R receptacles and the chief scars that show when the key was removed. So if someone, you know, want to accuse the military fire department of getting into their facility at midnight on, on Thursday, June 16th, uh, we would be able to show that we did or didn't. Do that. And do any of them have cameras on them? I don't believe that that is a, a an option that Knox specifically offers, mm -hmm. but in you know many facilities All have the their cameras. own cameras. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, not everybody. Yeah, yeah. And as the security Lisa, like if Greg takes his key on that Thursday night, it goes mm -hmm. back to his code. Whoever took the key out, everyone's key, uh, code specific. So as soon as you enter your code or taking the key, it's tied to you. To the key goes back in. Mm -hmm. Got it. Because every individual has a code. Yes. So there are Knoxbox, like the Amsterdam uh, facility, mm -hmm. um, has a Knoxbox. Buildings, mine's here, have one. We've been to that the past couple years over there. School mm -hmm. district yep. buildings all have it. Mm -hmm. um, for AD, the crossing, ever since the first with uh, Whole Foods in 2019, mm -hmm. we started with the issuance of the CO. We started there, a lot of the other buildings here. Like the Cupola building, you have every key because the age difference from someone in their upper 80s, 90s down to teenagers living there and everything the ambulance is going a couple times the fire department's open doors for them so the people can get there so it's worked out there same with 54 hunts place we have the same setup so mm -hmm. the chico's marinol facilities uh, there's the ability to to have double double cylinders on a, <clears throat> on a single where we share both with other fire districts like on uh, chapel on all the schools and i think we have pretty much all the schools dual box so what would the legislation do required on all municipal and buildings? No, uh, the, the proposal, the what Mount Pleasant worked on, um, was this, Jill, you, did you distribute this to the? So Ed, um, our council took it actually modified it for Newcastle. Um, I don't know if it's verbatim or. Not verbatim, but we took, definitely took from Mount Pleasant. We looked at Austin, I think, too, maybe one other. We have uh, some draft legislation that's in uh, what we call the packet. We're all looking at it. I see. Yeah, so so maybe not tonight, but. It, but um, yeah, Austin is all commercial buildings. We're just kind of picking and choosing, trying to mm -hmm. So you haven't, so we haven't seen that. Yeah, that's fine. You don't need to, but at some point, maybe Jill or you could, you know, we, we could look at it and, and uh, look, look at that. I'm you have it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, How does it help? If you have know, a multifamily, three or more, and it's used for a common entrance. You still can't get access to the. Well, in a notch box on a multifamily, like the requirements in Germany, required to have every key. In and out oh, gotcha. Yeah. So once you're in, you're in. Once you're in, you're in, it should be labeled. Like Marinol, we have a key file. We can get it in every door. Like I asked for. So when you're at the school district, if there's a if there's places that are locked box. inside that box, we have yep. Mavis, Mavis, and Millwood, yep. very extensive facility. So once we get into the knocks, then it's we just have time to It's just time to Even in a real fire, nobody's home. You get a knocks box, even the smoke, a little smoke showing. Mm -hmm. We're not breaking down a five, six, eight hundred dollar door. Yeah. For three, four hundred dollars, put a little box on the door, we'll open up, put the key, put it back. So the sunshine now we used to the sunshine for the, <laughs> so all the parameters there. What have you seen? So what? I, I don't. I personally don't have a problem with like commercial meeting spaces, you know, town buildings, etc. But what are you seeing with houses of worship? Because particularly, like what I think is issues of anti-Semitism, things like that. I'm not sure. That a synagogue, for instance, wants their keys, even though it's in a Knox box, kind of available outside. But uh, I think we have a good one. Temple Bethel, they're one of the first. I mean, I've been here for okay. five years in the fall, but 
their facilities director, Jason Stringer, anytime they change a key lease, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Call me to let Paul know, hey, I got a new key. I've updated the come. There's fantastic. Same with the churches here in town. Yeah, that that spot, so pretty protected. So that was a yeah, okay. pretty strong. They're actually very happy because a lot of the doors are very expensive there. Mm -hmm. But they had an issue a couple of years ago. One of the doors wasn't opening there. We went back to it. Like, that would be to break a $5,000 door. They're mm -hmm. happy just to have the keys and everything where it's a one time cost. I okay. think it's $500 now for the commercial size box. Mm -hmm. they're small, they're, yeah, there's larger keys. They're listed in that. Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, not up quite, quite a bit, but. Still, when the smaller think. boxes, like three and change, four hundred. The larger you're ones up to, is you're up to five. Up to five now. Yeah. But it's a small cost considering what a door is. Mm -hmm. Even for homeowners, I mean, it's totally up to. I don't. I don't think you got a mandate. Yeah, it, it should be an option for them, though. It does speak to the gates. Yes. So some of the yeah. gated uh, McMansions, um, we, we would. And it could be a Knox box, or we we also have some. Uh, situations with, with chains like the Ledger Commons off of Route 100 in Millwood, mm -hmm. and then the Elder Castle that we had a couple of incendiary fires at recently. We uh, right asked them to uh, chain it up, and so they can provide uh, like a padlock that is keyed exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So on that situation, we put a, a uh, the key for the for the people uh, who are there, and, and we put uh, a lock. We put our lock, so either one they can open it up, and then we can open it up using mm -hmm. our lock. Also, like that's really we found out from talking to a lot of the property managers, different people here. A lot of people are getting uh, fire insurance rebates by having an Oxbox now. I guess they do their annual assessments with their insurance companies. Mm -hmm. If they have like the gate, the Knox gate the assembly or an Oxbox on their house, they're getting substantial uh, rebates. So a lot of people are happy with that with everything going on. Do you have an estimate of how many locations um, do not already have one that would? Then be required. I could probably have a few tomorrow afternoon, Holly or Thursday, if I can pull it from the county. That would be required. No, have it already. Then oh, we have she's saying. No, oh. you're saying who, 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 under this would then be required. Yeah, yeah, so we have to do a little work. Yeah, a little work. I mean, I can find out who, how many we have already. That's pretty easy. It's, I have to see your draft too before I can comment that because this there's a couple of ambiguities in the Mount Pleasant law that I would, you know, if we were working on this, I would have commented on tonight, but I'll hold that in abeyance until I see your draft. Yeah, just to tick off, uh, if I can, um, buildings used for commercial or industrial use, places of assembly, nursing homes, that's a little bit of a difference. We have, that's a defined term in our zoning code. That's why I picked that up instead of whatever I think uh, Austin had. Gatehouses controlling access to residential subdivisions. Now, there was a question that probably mentioned a moment ago about the gates to uh, residential properties. The, the models that we're looking at excluded uh, single family homes. Mm -hmm. But I think there, there's a, um, an argument for requiring it if you've got a gate at the, you know, at the curb that is going to limit access. And um, we're going to get 100% of the way that there's going to break through it. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but those, I mean, I know we were to I'm going to tell you we're going to get what it's going to cost you at the end. The, the, there was um, an incident um, several years ago. Bridge, sorry, what Quaker Bridge Road out in it was like a five thousand dollar gate that got bent because someone was having oh, a heart that. attack yeah, and they they that gave the yeah. Yeah, whatever it is they gave the code to the police but it got yeah lost codes it. and individual yeah. keys are nothing but a nightmare. anyway and and it was it was awful um, and this beautiful piece of art was completely destroyed they actually make the the Knox boxes that you can open and have a button to open up the gate. Well, you know, I can understand wanting a Knox box for the gate at, at a gated community, but once you start asking for the homes, then that's just like requiring it for every single well, family. Well, not, not, not single family. The not single family homes, and I don't think that that's not in here, and I don't think I'm no, putting it in Right. Okay. The, the, the only the comment was made a, a gate for a single yes, family home. It's a gate. That's yeah. us. Right. Well, so I can actually that, fight the fire. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, somebody can make a decision whether they want to make that small investment. I don't know about mandating it. Well, like that's, all, that's optional. Right. Yeah. That, that, well, no, that's, but that's they're, they're saying to put that in the law. For mandating. No, they're saying to put it in the law. I would disagree because it, single I think it should be because otherwise you're running the risk that it's going to spread or they have to. Oh, not a if, it's a, if it's a, oh. a single house that has a gate, 
I, I, I'm, I don't have any objection to the homeowner choosing to have it and register. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's the homeowner that, choice. Yeah, I don't know that we need to require it because, like you said, they, they can get in if they need to. The problem is the damage. I'm going to just example because literally we were having an email discussion Ed, last week. There was two one on Lawrence Farms Crossway and then Great House High Meadows was the other one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, if I had a five thousand dollar gate, I'd get one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What I'm saying. I'm just saying that I don't know that we need. To we we will get in, like Chief yeah. Rodriguez yeah. says. However, if it's a, if it's a working fire and and now we're we're delayed five minutes trying to break through this gate to then get to the structure. So as you know from you know fire, you know fires double in size every every. Minutes. So now I'm putting 30 volunteers at a greater risk when we finally do get to that residence because we've wasted all that time at that gate. All right. That's, so, so, yeah. you know. so what about, what about, so then it costs a very small too probably on the gate side. Well, that's why I just, it's 200 uh, boxes I can't imagine who would wiring. choose not to, yeah. I guess. Is, my, is there, is there any language for structure that are a certain size? Because you look at like the Legionnaires, which is vacant now, right? But I don't know what that. I don't know if it's considered what now, residential, commercial, hospital. What is that? So, so. Engineers. Engineers are on the one twenty side of the Oh, the whole building's gone. Uh, two years ago, they took most of that down for the vacant property. Now they're all built. Yeah, so they're there. It's an old historic. It's building. off of um yeah, one twenty eight. Some of it was taken down or closed off. But I know what you're talking about. It's closed off. Right? There's a gate. Yeah. But so, yeah, it's been closed off for a while. Yeah. Took it down. I will be toward there. I, but anyway, that's, 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 that's yeah. beautiful. Um, but something is there any language you've seen or you've seen with just the size of the property as of the structure? Is that relevant? Does that make a difference? Because it, if it's a 10,000 square foot. I understand your time. Or, yeah, or, or is it vacant? Like the church, the Lutheran church is vacant. Commercials right. commercially so, pretty much. What is it? It's still a church. The categories are really driving it. So, you know, a building or a multifamily residential structure, um, a nursing home, a daycare facility, these are going to be just by, by the description of you know, bigger, bigger buildings. So, the engineer, assuming it's standing, whatever it is, that would fall in one of the. Of these possible categories. That was also places of public assembly. So, I mean, if that did get one time when it was active, that, well, I'm actually not sure public assembly. Uh, public, I'm just curious because you want, that's a huge structure yeah. mm -hmm. that you want to make sure you get access to. Under right. definition, it's an assembly, yes, it would, have, it would be required. So. You know what we're talking about? I'm talking about on the east side? It's on the flats. It's a, it's George, right there. between no, uh, the Mooney, the Moonies were there, right? Yes. The Moonies were there. Mm. It's a huge one. It's got to be what, 18,000 square foot, the main structure, and it's enormous. It's enormous. Picture. But, okay. I, but well, I understand. It. But yeah, the point is so, so we're probably, I understand, you know, these are things to be, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're going to have to tweak this and, and, and discuss it. And, and I understand your, your concerns, you know, just anything that can facilitate our getting, you know, up that long driveway I, to a big structure. I just can't imagine yeah. why anyone would, would not have chosen it's because they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Education. So, yeah. Education. All right, so I would say, I think yeah, it sounds like the town board is willing to consider this law. Yeah, I so um, I think if you guys can just take a look at the draft that Ed Tinker with, as well. see, yes, and see if there are any, if there are any issues with it or suggested changes, can you get back to us? Yeah, we should include Mount Kisco yes. too, right, for the Northern Protection District. So we'll, okay. we'll get something to look Okay, so see. just if you have any you know, glaring changes, things like that, get back to us. And then we can um, discuss it maybe at our next meeting, our next work session and try to workshop it a little bit and then have a public, we have a public hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's all right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your Thank you. Get back to us, Lee Flowers. <laughs> no, seriously. I seriously What's the best so, so I mean, she's complaining about you know it's only four hundred dollars for a leaf blower. I get that point, but when you have multi, you're a contractor. You got to do 10, 12 houses a day. Yeah. So how, how, how do you charge that? Right. So now you got to put an inverter in your car, and you're going to put your car running more pollution into the air to keep that charger running. It's, it's, I said, where are you saving the, the noise? You, you didn't really well, you, you think you're saving the noise, but you're not yeah. saving the environment. You're not, you're saving, you're not saving the environment. And then the batteries, that's you gotta throw the batteries out. Yeah. That's, that's an environmental thing. Right. You can't just throw the batteries out. So, I mean, 
Food for yeah. thought. I'm just saying, electric's nice, but thank you. Thank you. Um, Jeff, you want to All right. So next is um, the sound improvement grant. So we had been approached by the historical society, who asked us whether or not they might be eligible for the sound um, improvement um, grant, and the answer was no. Actually, because we sit on the credentials that you know. Uh, we get it together for the program. They're now the commercial, you know, we talk with each other coming. So the question ended up being whether or not anybody has applied for the program yet. The answer is no. Um, it's so funny because I've had so, uh, like, three different merchants approach me. I told them how to do it. Yeah. I told you that thing. They said, yeah. you told them they didn't need to apply. I don't know. But um, I went back to them and said, no, you absolutely need to apply. It was for a place in awning. Um, yeah. Although even so, I don't think it's, it was very much money. We'll split half up to $1,000. Yeah. It's still free money, so I don't yeah. get it. But yeah, no, so I'll follow money. up with them again. I think it expires, what, in September? So the so, question what is whether or not we would expand the eligibility to include the historical society. Specifically, just the historical society, or, or yeah, not, that was yeah, any not for profits mm -hmm. operating within yeah, the I was, I was that. Yeah, I would certainly. I mean, because it's not just a not for profit, it's a not for profit that has a building that has a facade in the. I mean, right. I can't even think of anything other than the historical society, yes, a, a church, yeah, a church, a house of worship. If it's in the Hamlet. Right. And, to, and for people who are viewing at home or fans, it's in the Hamlet because that's where the money was from for some green film. Right. Which I'm mm -hmm. um, trying to think of what else. Um, I mean, I'm not sure I want to want, want like, it to apply to Bell. Well, it's not enough. Pro it's not enough. Pro it's it's enough. Enough. Right. Right. We can define it as you know, your true. Yeah, that's a yeah. taxing authority. I don't know. Yeah. Separate government. Yeah, they don't yeah. 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 Make it as narrow as possible while also okay. allowing okay. the historical yeah. society yeah. to apply mm -hmm. but and I maybe other yeah. non for profits. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to exclude, say, the, the Fuller House project. You know, if they were impacted or for something they wanted to. I would. That's, that, that's, yeah. a, resident, and that's a resident. That's yeah, resident. I don't think they're in, I don't think they fall within the, the, Hamlet. the Hamlet, I don't think, but also. I feel yeah, like it's too yeah, far yeah, up. Yeah. But to me, that's a residential. It's going to be a residential it's hall. Like, business. you don't want, yeah. Yeah. it's not a yeah. business. Okay. It's meant to apply to stores, basically. Mm -hmm. yes. Commercial yes. businesses. So that's so. why the yeah. benefit us too. So you have a nice but, looking store. But I don't think you, so yeah. think you can just say mm -hmm. not for profit. I think no, you have right, to be right. as specific as possible mm -hmm. without right. specifically Cross saying the worship. Newcastle Historical Society. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of like cities, cities over a million people. It's just <laughs> New York. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Okay. 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 Thanks. Um, next, um, two things. Oh, actually. and then actually, I want to, you know, need to revisit it now. But if it does seem something like people, I mean, I've had merchants ask me about it, and I'm flabbergasted that they've not applied. Mm -hmm. So unless there's some disconnect and they think they applied. Because I know, like, a few of them thought they applied, so I, I don't know. So I have to find out what they actually did. But, um, you know, if people are interested and just haven't gotten around to it, we might want to consider extending the deadline, but let's see who sure. actually applies. At what point are they able to uh, apply? Like, does the project have to be done for them to... We were really liberal about that. Um, it can be so. In, in order for them to be reimbursed, they have, have had they actually have to complete the project. Sure. So we yeah. So we pay fifty percent up to them. I, I guess would what I'm say as long as they apply by September by the deadline, even if the work is not completed, it's still been approved that it's going to be paid yeah. in September, even if the work. I just want to make sure that if we're going to expand it to include them, they're not automatically cut off just because of the timing. No, um, we should, we, so. we should. I don't think so. I thought the building permit had to be issued, but the we would make sure no one gets caught out. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so we had a meeting on um, uh, with EDR, who is the engineering firm uh, 
who has been um, employed by Westchester County for the um, uh, the 120 uh, sewer extension. Uh, and a couple of things. The board has already seen the seven page packet from EDR. Um, somebody here, yeah. You did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I can't get them out. So, uh, um, so just so the board's aware, they, um, they were concerned about the uh, low response rate that they typically get when they send out these surveys. And so they had asked us to consider um, a cover note to go with it. So it's a very brief cover note that you can use the signature just so that you're aware of it. And we're hoping to send it out. Um, Tiffany, what do we think? Maybe tomorrow or the next day we'll get those 50 letters out to uh, the, the residents along the Quaker Street. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we'll get these out. And so these are for the, the residents who live along Quaker Street between the current um, end of the sewer trunk line to the southern entrance of the Wagon Road Camp. Um, and if you're living, if you're one of those 50 homes that are specifically along that route, you have the right to um, directly connect to the sewer trunk. Um, it would be at your expense, but it would be something that would be available to you um, without you actually be able to avoid the charges of a local district. So at the end of the day, it's financially beneficial to you. Um, but they do need you to fill out the survey. And filling out the survey does not commit you to connecting to sewer or to any financial um, you know, commitment in the future. It's just to be able to assist them. So I'm going to put that in bold letters. Okay. That's just under my knock because I know that this is boom. So I just wanted to make it clear that the town is not going to connect them. Yes. That they would have to pay to connect. I don't want to talk to them about what it's going to cost, but just like. Yeah, I think I put in. You were able to connect to Sue. Oh, you did. Yeah, good. yes, you added did. that. Yeah, yes. yes, okay, good. Yeah, no, you had you, That was a good point. You should be clarified. Okay. So, I didn't um, see yeah. That. Okay, so Tiffany, so tomorrow we'll just bold that sentence. Um, the one that says that yeah, filling out the survey does not. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so we'll just bold that. We'll talk about it tomorrow for you. Okay, great. They're um, still going to so call the town hall. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when, you connect, uh, when you connect to a sewer, you're not, not constricted in terms of your house size, in terms of bedrooms. That you would do to you. No, it's better. Yeah, well, it's yeah. Better. they're very lucky. Better, yeah. Better, yeah. Because otherwise you're wrong. Um, you eliminate the constraints, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those constraints right. are for septic. Yeah. You know, people may not understand the potential benefits of that. Yeah, it's a great benefit. Well. Although it could be pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah um, but down the road, you know, it will give us the opportunity to create local sewer districts along there, um, along those properties, which will give them, we can get 51% of the homes in the area. We can actually create local sewer districts and be able to expand it. That's These great. are people that are already paying so no sewer district taxes, but have septics. So they're oh. getting no benefit from that tax whatsoever, but they're paying it. And I'm not sure all the people who are in that situation really understand. I don't Probably not. Tax. And I have to tell you, when you try to explain to somebody that they're paying for a taxi for a service that they're, <laughs> that they're unable to use, it is um, yeah, very frustrating. And uh, so um, the county's making good on that promise that uh, they um, declined to allow people to come out of the sewer district because they promised they were going to be expanding the truck line and so finally now just so we're clear this construction is not slated before 2025 mm -hmm. okay. so it's going to be uh, that's how long it takes to do this but they're at 60 percent yes grind really slowly and, and 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 structure really slowly um okay the other thing that we did was we um because this engineering firm um had topographical maps of 120 and property, um, general property lines. Um, we asked them for a proposal to do a feasibility um, study along Route 120 to extend the sidewalk from its current location at Marport uh, to the southern entrance of the Wagon Road Camp. Um, it's got a lot of uh, challenges there. They've got retaining walls, um, hills, slopes, a lot of mature trees. We were very lucky when we did the first section of 120 where the state allowed us to, um, to meander around um, some mature plantings. Um, and so it's just a lovely sidewalk. We're hoping that maybe they'll consider allowing us to do it again. 
Uh, the feasibility study uh, proposal is in the packet. It's uh, like $300, just under $10,000. Um, it's one of the considerations that the board um, identified for um, expanding sidewalks up on 20. Um, at the end of the day, it would be amazing for kids to be able to walk through and book school. Um, we're halfway there. Yeah, yeah. They go all the way up. Um, yeah, and go all the way up. It can't but happen all at once. So no, it's, it's got to go in piecemeal. So if it was easy, it would have been done already. We know that there are challenges, but the feasibility study is our first step of doing it. So well, we're getting there, but it would be a shame to cut down mature trees. So I'm is there any reason why they wouldn't allow us this time to kind yes. of meander around? Because the laws because. have changed, the regulations yeah. have changed. Um, sure. So we used to shelves. Yeah. Yeah. We used to be that they allowed us to um, just. Well, we did talk about easements. Yes, easements versus so takings and things like that. Um, but you know what? But, but I would like the board to support the feasibility study at the very least so that we can see what the engineers come up with and see what our options are. And maybe there's a way. Um, they had talked to me about. Um, you know, coming up uh, one side of the street and perhaps crossing traffic to the other side. And I said to them, think about the fact that it's in elementary school a little bit up the road. And so you're talking about, you know, ideally an eight year old who can even walk themselves. Yeah. You know, are you going to have them cross a truck? Probably not. So, you know, let them, let's see what they come up with. But, um, um, you know, engaging them to, to complete the feasibility study is the first step. So. We're okay with that. That would be good. I'm in favor. Yep. Great. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, the next uh, couple things have to do with um, letters of support. We got a notice from Sustainable Westchester last Friday asking for a letter last Friday to be sent. <laughs> um, so um, the draft is in your packet. Um, I'm happy to support, you know, sustainable Westchester. I think, you know, we've, we've supported them every step along the way. Um, you know, uh, the board interested in, it, it's, it's a little on the late side, but. That's right, so is there any value at this point? Um, the session isn't over yet. Yeah. No, not technical. Yeah, um, but, but yeah I, I, I'm just wondering. Yeah, like I know. Yeah, well, I, I don't think it can hurt. Okay, okay. You know, and, and if in any event it could be effective, then mm -hmm. okay. I'd be supportive. And I will say, I believe a number of uh, a good portion of the municipalities, at least that have supervisors, have supported this. Okay, that'll be good. All right, then we'll we'll get that out tomorrow. Then. Okay, and Rob, do you want to talk about the next one? Yeah, the next one is uh, <coughs> a letter of support for a bill that is uh, in front of the Senate and. The assembly, and uh, I think it's come through committee in the Senate and it's going to come to a vote. The assembly is still sitting in committee, and they were hoping it, it is almost 11th hour, but we were hoping that the board would support this. And, and really, what it does is it um, it allows for workers' compensation coverage to offer a plan with a high deductible, and how that would benefit us, similar to where we are with Mevco with our self-insurance plan. Um, we have kind of a, a high deductible plan there, basically where the town pays the first dollar up to 75,000. And then once we get above that, there's shared and pooled coverage above that. It would not operate exactly the same, but similar, which would bring down the ultimate, would bring down the workers comp rate. We'd be responsible for a little more of the lower or a higher volume of the lower claims, but um, we'd be protected at the high end. And there's a, a group in PERMA that's, um, they were kind of grandfathered in. It's a county somewhere upstate, I can't think of the county, um, but they're operating with this structure and they've saved a ton of money doing it. So PERMA has been pushing this for years. They haven't been able to get it out of the committee. They didn't have support of the unions, which I don't know why. Workers' comp coverage is standard basically. Um, why any union or employee would care how the town pays for it, uh, I'm not certain. So we were just hoping to get a bill and uh, a letter of support that we can get to Chris Burdick and possibly ask him to push this through. Um, Dana Levenberg is a co-sponsor um, over to my state. So have we done um, an analysis within Newcastle as to how many of those claims kind of above 75? 
So there, there's not an exact claim, and this wouldn't lock us into doing anything. This would provide a mechanism. The state currently doesn't allow it. This would be a bill that would allow it. Before we would enter into that plan, we would look at that. But since, um, since you joined the board and we switched from state insurance fund and lowered our claims and we're back to PERMA now, mm -hmm. we just got our second new renewal for PERMA that was even lower than they promised because of the... Um, because of our claims history over the last year. So it benefits a municipality like ours that is controlling the lower end and the volume cost, which we've done through safety training and, and a little more diligence. And it's, you know, it protects us at the high end. So, you know, obviously before we would enter into that plan, you know, it would be offered through PERMA. Before we would enter into that, we'd get kind of a, a, an estimate they'd run through mm -hmm. the cost estimate and, and based on our claims, what we would expect. So, um, but this bill would just allow for that to happen. Right now it doesn't. It makes a lot of okay. sense to yeah. give okay. the communities options and yeah. choose whether we take advantage of it or yeah. not. Yeah, they're having difficulty. It, it's, it's actually intricate. It's very difficult for a lot of probably the legislators to understand. And because a lot of them, not a lot of municipalities are in PERMA. There's a couple other workers comp options out there and state insurance fund wouldn't offer this. The comp alliance wouldn't offer it. So it's really specific to the PERMA plan. So it's been hard getting the ear of anybody to really push this forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Are we in? Okay. Okay. Um, next are our, our administrative items. Uh, the retroactive approval for the payment of claims from the check stated uh, May 31st. Uh, next, we've got authorization to declare surplus uh, recreation. Um, we've got some. Uh, Vehicle auction results. Uh, we have once again another um, authorization to purchase police vehicles. Um, we keep switching companies. I think we're getting uh, our charges now, and the price is going up. So we have to yeah. revise that again. Um, we this Dodge Charger, and every time he drives, everyone slows down around him. <laughs> 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 Oh, is this one lower? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. It's because we switched on. Um, we switched from the Ford to the Chrysler, so it's actually yeah the Dodge. So, yeah. yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. We have the uh, Veolia contract ex extension uh, with those modifications that we asked for. We received them, and uh, we're going out to uh, bid for the water no water treatment plant uh, roof replacement project. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. And we are renewing the annual service agreement with uh, iWork Systems. Um, and that's so. We must be in. Okay. Close to three hundred thousand dollars on auction. Well done. Well done. All right. All right. So, are we? Anyone have any questions on anything? No. Otherwise, I think we can move to resolutions. Right. Hi. Um, yeah. you want to start? I move to retroactively approve the payment of claims in the amount of $119,780.26 listed on the summary AP check register and detail voucher detail reports all dated May 31st, 2023. Checks are printed and distributed to each claimant listed on Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Second. 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 All in favor. <laughs> I move to authorize the additional rates of pay for the following individuals who serve as recreation attendants within the Recreation and Parks Department effective June 7, 2023. Dylan Rushdell, pay rate $20 an hour. Morgan O'Malley, pay rate $16 an hour. Kevin McCarville, pay rate $18 an hour. Second. All in favor. All right. I move to authorize a hiring of Christopher Braun to the position of 43 police officer within the Newcastle Police Department at an annual salary of $75,573. In no sense, effective July 10th, 2023, or the date Westchester County approves the resignation slash statement. Second. All in favor? Aye. I move to authorize the hiring of Lily Burke to the position of student intern within the court clerk's office at the hourly rate of $15 per hour, effective June 19, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
I move to authorize the change in title of Miguel Fabriel from Engineer A to Assistant Civil Engineer at the annual salary of $105,363.45, effective June 12, 2023. Second. All in favor. Okay. I move to authorize the hiring of Ronald Umland to the position of Motor Equipment Operator within the Department of Public Works Recycling Unit at the annual salary of $69,347.25, effective June 26, 2023. All in favor. Uh, I move to accept the resignation of Robin Dansky from the Holocaust and Human Rights Committee, effective May 15, 2023. The town would like to thank her for her service. Second. All in favor. Aye. I move to accept the resignation of Robert Sullivan from the Board of Assessment Review, effective May 24th, 2022. The town would like to thank him for his service. Second. All in favor. Aye. I move to authorize the appointment of Daniel Pappas as member of the Board of Assessment Review to fulfill the unexpired term, effective through September 30th, 2025. Second. All in favor. Aye. Like his wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? Do we need to? We don't need to resolve to those letters and support, do we? No, okay. Um, all right, okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second, all in favor. All right, all right. thank you, everybody.